what if I have a big long-term care event? I definitely don't want to retire because that could happen. I hear this all the time. In fact, even Wright Capital, they put some significant uh, costs for long-term care the last two years of your life. And the reason they do that is because uh, the vast majority of expenditures on health care are for the last two years of your life, which is... I laugh because there was, oh yeah, the last few years of your life, that's where you're going to spend your, your money on health care. Well, you don't know it's the last two years of your life now, do you? you know? <laughs> it just always cracks me up. I'm going to live till I'm 90, so I'm 88. The last two years of my life, the significant spending increase on health care, kind of the retirement smile, which I actually call it the retirement fish hook. But anyway, it always kind of chuckles me. So if we just reduce people's last two years of your life, of expenditures of health care, we can really save a boatload on long-term care costs. <laughs> you don't know it's the last two years of your life until you die. And of course it's the last two years of your life. That's why you go to the hospital. Because like, man, I had a stroke. Two years later, you're dead. I mean, it just it inherently makes sense, my friends. I, I'm reading my book, again, rereading it, in Green Mountain Farm. And the guy says, the computers and all this that generate efficiency, you know, he calls it a, uh, a tractor in the farm, all the efficiency of a tractor in the farm. He, he says, I don't, think, I don't think it's efficient, not for a human being. All the software, he didn't say software, but the electronic calculators, what he called it because it's from 1940s. The tractors and all this, from an individual human being, it's not efficient. I cannot agree more when it comes to retirement planning. Well, we've got to deal with the fact the last two years of your life is when you're going to spend most of your money on health care. Well, tell me when that's going to be, all right? Uh, first of all, I don't know. Second of all, it inherently makes sense that the last two years of your life are when you spend your most on health care. If you do spend much on health care those last two years, by the way, which tells you also, too, that the previous to the last two years of your life, hardly anyone spends anything on health care. Hey, literally, look at the numbers. How much... Is spent on health care in the United States. The vast majority is the last two years of someone's life. All right? The vast majority. <sighs> Which means, if you're not within the last two years of your life, you don't spend that much on health care. Now, the drawback is you don't know if it's the last two years of life, like I just said. We're not sure. When do I die? I don't know. But if I'm not in the last two years of my life, again, I don't know, I'm not spending that much money on health care. So I'm going to withhold retiring because I'm worried about the last two years of my life, which is what everyone does, which is crazy to me. It's crazy. Because they say, don't you see, Josh, the, the health care expense of retirement goes way up as you get older. No, it doesn't. Only the last two years of your life. All right, so part two of this, by the way, which actually ticks me off, and this is why I'm a big fan of CCRCs, by the way, Continuing Care Retirement Communities. My first start my channel, I did a lot of videos on these. I need to revisit this. I love CCRCs. All right, so what happens with CCRC? Everyone says, well, they're expensive. Yeah, it's pretty expensive to get in. Typically, the, uh, uh, a little bit more than the median home in your neighborhood. You know, that's just a fact. So if the median home costs 300000 bucks. your entrance fee on our CCRC is probably 400000 bucks. And, uh, and by the way, most people who think about going to CCRCs don't have a median home value. They have a, a upper affluent value, if that makes sense. Thus, they usually sell their home, use the uh, proceeds. Uh, sometimes it's not even the entirety of the sale of their home to fund their CCRC. And then, once they move in, they're paying five, six thousand bucks a month for hubby and wife. See, Josh, that's expensive. That's seventy-two thousand dollars a year on top of the four hundred thousand bucks I put in. Okay. How much were you spending before you went to the CCRC? You know, four thousand a month. All right, so you're spending an extra thousand bucks a month in the CCRC because you don't retain the spending previous to going to a CCRC and add the expenses of the CCRC to it. And this is where a lot of people make this mistake. They say the CCRC costs five or six thousand bucks a month. 
all right, how much are you spending right now? I don't know. I don't think it's five or six thousand bucks a month. Exactly. You don't know. That's the point. You don't know. How much is it? Four thousand a month? All right, so it costs an extra a thousand, two thousand bucks a month. On top of that, you sold your house for seven hundred thousand bucks. Entrance fee for a CCRC is four hundred thousand bucks, whatever. You got three hundred thousand bucks left over. And all you're gonna have to come up with is two thousand bucks a month difference on that three hundred, four hundred thousand bucks net proceeds of the sale of your home. You can't make that work? Yeah, you can. Same thing with long-term care. Well, I don't want to go to CCRC. I'm going to go to assisted living or a, uh, a Medicare facility of some sort. Medicare, not Medicaid. Manager. All right. So you're spending 5,000 bucks pre-assisted living a month. It costs you 100,000 bucks a year for a room in a Medicare facility, long-term care facility, excuse me. <laughs> So that's 8,300 bucks a month right there. You're already spending $5,000 a month. So it's, you don't spend the 8,300 bucks a month on top, on top of the uh, 5,000 a month you're spending. Because being an assisted living facility, is pretty, like a CCRC is pretty much all inclusive. Now, if you want to go to a, go see the Atlanta Braves, you're going to have to cover that on your own. Most people who are in the long-term care facilities, nursing homes, they probably don't go see the Atlanta Braves anymore. Now do they? <sighs> it's so doggone frustrating. Which is why I call it the retirement spending fish hook. A, if anyone ever needs that, because the bulk don't, there's always, obviously, a uh, outlier of people who have six, six significant expenses on this stuff. I get it. You don't plan for the outliers though. You either cover that with insurance or you say my insurance is my home. One of those two things. But I'm not gonna sit there and make a plan for a black swan because I don't know when it's gonna hit, if it even does hit. Especially because the nature of a black swan is it's not likely to hit anyway. Crazy. All right, so let's go back now. The retirement spending fish hook. All right, so we'll say as you get older, your expenses on healthcare do go up a little bit. I don't have any qualm with saying that. Makes sense. Probably goes up even more because Medicare isn't world of hurt as it is. All right. So your expenses go up a little bit. Wow. It went up from 10% of consumption to now 15% of consumption of your income. So it was healthcare related costs. If you made 100,000 bucks, you're spending 10,000 bucks a year in healthcare. Now you're spending 15,000 a year in healthcare. All right, so that's a 50% inflation amount. That, that's that's going to break the bank? That's what's going to doom you where you can't retire? That's yeah, 50% on a very low number to begin with. It's 50% increase on 10% to begin with. It's not a 50% increase on the entirety of your income, of your expending. It's 50% on a low number. Again, housing costs are the highest one. 42% of CPI is housing. That's just a fact of jack. So 32% is, is that is based on your shelter. All right. So 50% increase on housing is a hell of a lot different than a 50% increase on health care. Why don't people get this? It's crazy to me. It's crazy. Even financial planners. If I go to a long-term care facility, inherently I'm no longer using my own house. Now, my husband still might be in there, I grant you. But I'm also not only am I not using my house anymore, I'm also not using the day-to-day -day expenses of being in that house. So what happens? The vast majority of us. Charlotte's four years younger. She's a woman. She wipes my butt. She pushes me around. I die sit in the chair watching the Patriots or the Bruins. A couple years later, she has a need. She goes to the long-term care facility via selling the house. If that even happens. And the likelihood of that even happening isn't very high. I just understand that. 